One of the most successful real estate developers of all time just purchased Elizabeth Taylor's former residence in Lower Bel Air and he's planning to build his next mega mansion. But first, we're going to study his equation to success. What is his blueprint that has made them one of the most successful real estate developers of all time when so many in this field have failed? And I'm going to show you guys, give you guys nuggets of information that can help you in your next real estate transaction. Let's get down to it. I'm Arvin Haddad. You might have seen me on CNBC listing Impossible, but more probably you've seen my viral TikTok channel where I critique celebrity homes. And if you've seen the channel, then you know that I'm super passionate about critiquing and understanding and analyzing single family homes because this asset class is not getting analyzed like other asset classes like stocks or commodities. And for that reason, a lot of people make mistakes. If you do real estate right, if you buy the right home for yourself, the statistics show that majority of your wealth by the time you're 70 80 years old is going to come from your home investment most americans don't get to save enough money so this is important to you so hit the subscribe button hit that bell so you get notification when i post so let's get started to figure out what Artie is going to do with the elizabeth taylor property we need to study his equation to success what is his blueprint that has made them one of the most successful real estate developers in the world when during the same time so many mega mansion developers have simply failed and gone bankrupt what i I can tell you is that there is a pattern guys and you can learn from this pattern either maybe you want to become a real estate developer which is super direct but most probably you will help you buy the right house in the future for yourself where it has a little bit of upside and you have a vision for that property so when you buy it during your stay in that property you improve that property you gain that extra equity beside the natural appreciation of the property and you switch and flip to better and better properties in your lifetime right so this applies to you now my prime two examples are two of his projects right Sarbonne in Lower Bel Air and Sanofre in Riviera Pacific Palisade the first exhibit is that both properties are in a triple A location, meaning in that geolocation of their neighborhood, they are the best streets, some of the best streets and you know most desired streets, right? But the second element is very different. It's the C house in that A location. More importantly, houses that or lots that have major challenges. In Sarbonne, we're talking about a very sloped lot, right? With great views, great street, but very sloped. And also San Ofre, where accessibility to the lot and the entrance and the driveway was very unique and challenging, right? Both these lots, when he purchased them, he was not competing with end users because of those problems. So he ended up not paying as high because end users, people who want to move their family there, are willing to pay a higher amount than a developer because they don't want to make a profit on it. They just want to live in it, correct? Right? So that's the first element of, you know, what type of projects he picks. But then he solves the problem. That's the number two. He has a civil engineering background. He is not scared of these mega projects. And for whatever reason, he has the bank leverage and financing behind it to execute on these mega projects where a lot of other developers are fearful and view as very risky. Now, he uses this to his benefit, right? By going after projects that other developers don't want to. But then being in a field that he's very comfortable with, right? For whatever background that he has, he has the finances and he has the engineering, structural engineering, civil engineering background to come up with solutions for these problems to make these properties sellable, right? Now, the third element is his design. Both these projects, I, what I call are oriental modern. Now, I've visited Sarbonne in person and I can tell you it was one of the most warm modern houses I have ever seen. And at the time when it came out, it was just a breath of fresh air. It was something I had never seen before, even though this property had a lot of flaws. For someone who's experienced like me, when I was in this property, I overlooked most of its flaws. And later on, I realized, wait a minute, the fundamentals about that property wasn't that excellent. Why? It barely had any frontage, right, for a $75 million house. Now, he bought this house, the lot, for $11 million. He got a $25 million loan on it at 5% interest rate, interest only, and then he sold it for $75 million. I'm sure there's other financing involved, but that's the, you know, the core of it right here. And the property had almost no frontage. It had very low amount of frontage. And then the backyard was not level with the entry level. I think one set of stairs or maybe possibly two sets of stairs to get to the backyard. That is a major negative, but his design 
was so fresh and so warm. It wasn't like these white modern boxes, right? It was modern, but it was warm. I call them oriental modern. I, I came up with that word, so feel free to use it. And again, Sanofra, I haven't seen it in person, but it just doesn't look like your typical modern house. He uses natural elements, a lot of natural wood, concrete, you know, he switches all these elements and he differentiates his products out of all of his other competitors, right? And that is another type of differentiation. So if that buyer pool goes sees every single modern house that look the same and then sees his modern house, he's like, wow, this is really different. This feels like a home. And I can tell you, Sarbonne, when I saw it, it's a huge house. It felt like a home. And that's one thing the billionaire client wants nowadays. They're staying away from these palatial mega mansions with, you know, 50,000 square foot room and 20 bedrooms. And they want these really modern Zen, you know, spa feel homes that they can relax in. Now, this brings me to the Elizabeth Taylor property, right? Look at the equation for success. The street is Neem, if I pronounce it correctly, it's N-I-M-E-S, but I think pronounced Neem. And this is one of the most famous streets. I mean, I'm gonna show you some of the houses that have been sold on this street. You will recognize most of them. Most notable one is the house with the helicopter on top, right? My last video or the video I did before that. So you can see that it's a name street, but the lot itself is not the best lot. Again, it's heavily sloped. It has a flat area, but the juice of the, the meat of the project is that slope and how he's going to utilize it. But then it kind of has a city view, but also a canyon view where it could be very zen and fit his style that he likes to create, right? Again, and then this one in particular has the name Elizabeth Taylor attached to it, which has a cachet when he's trying to sell it. You know, the formal residence of Elizabeth Taylor, that this is, you know, sacred land and, and Hollywood legacies have been formed over this dirt. You know, he has all these elements to pitch and convince the buyers to buy that project for him. So what have we learned from this video? Number one, try to buy the C, B minus, C minus house in an A neighborhood, whatever your budget. So your A neighborhood could be very different than another neighborhood, but push your neighborhood to be the best you can afford, but try to find a C house or B house that has a challenge, but you are the one who has a solution for it, right? And that's why it's important to take your contractors, your architects to the houses that you're planning to buy to see, hey, what is the upside here? What can I gain from the purchase of this house if I decide to fix it up during my stay, right? The B element of it is that that skill set. Maybe you know a developer or a contractor that specializes in opening windows where there are structural beams involved, right? And the C is having a designer or a design element that would distract from that flaw. So when someone walks in, they don't see the flaw right away, right? It's something they will realize after they've bought the house and kind of figured out, have come in ease with the property. They're like, wait a minute, the backyard is not even level with the front door. I have to take all these stairs to get to the backyard. And that is an inconvenience, right? I hope you enjoyed this video. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, because no one is analyzing this asset class like I am. And, you know, I like to look beyond the countertops and the home tours. Let's go deeper and learn something. I can't wait to see you in the next video. So hang tight and I'll see you next week.